What's up guys, my name is Kyle and welcome to Tech Hunter. On this channel I check out a lot of PC hardware as well as other day-to-day -day tech to make your lives that little bit easier. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. Today I'm checking out the biggest PC case I've ever got my hands on. I know there's plenty of people out there that love a small PC, something compact, portable and powerful. What about those people who love something huge, something big, something large? So Game Max reached out to me and thought that I needed something bigger than the Eclipse they sent me just a few weeks ago. If you've not seen that PC, click the link in the corner to see just what that looks like. But like I was saying, Game Max felt that the precision was something that needed to be showed off, so I gladly agreed. The Game Max precision is a monster. Measuring over half a meter tall, over half a meter deep, about 24 centimeters in width, it demands a lot of desk space. Crafted using a giant tempered glass panel and a lot of metal, the precision also makes for a heavy case too, which is apparent when you first pick up the case. In the box, it weighs just over 20 kilograms. So once you add some hardware, this thing can get pretty heavy. The precision costs 160 pounds in the UK, so it's not cheap. It's got a lot of features for that price, but is it enough to sway you towards this other than more popular manufacturers? Let's find out. Let's start things off at the front. The Precision has this nice brushed metal effect on the front. Though it is plastic underneath, it gives a more premium look. Though it does attract the oils in your hands and leaves some funny marks, but with a cloth, it can be easily sorted. There's a Game Max logo at the front too, as well as, yes, that's right, two five and a quarter inch bays. For a case this large, it's fairly good to see these as they can be used for, as a good place to put a reservoir when water cooling, especially in a compact case like this, when you're really, really struggling for space. We also have that digital RGB LED light bar going up the front left side of the front panel. Airflow is a bit restricted here with the only intake at the front being on the grill on this left hand side. And there's a reasonable gap between the front mounted fans and that grill, but it's not ideal. It would have been good if there was a mesh option included somehow. Moving around to the top, we have the IO and a lot of it power, reset, hard drive activity LED, LED cycle button, headphone and microphone jacks, two USB 2.0s, two USB 3.0s, and two fan controllers, which can, which can control up to seven fans in total. You can adjust the fan speeds between high, low, or even off, which I'm a huge fan of. As I mentioned earlier about the front panel, up the top we also have one of those same grills allowing for airflow in or out of the case, as well as a continuation of the digital LED light strip. On the right hand side of the case, the side panel has a nice meshed grille allowing for more airflow as fans can be mounted in front of that grille to allow more air to be either circulated into the case, whether that's drawing air in or taking it out. Looking at the back of this case, which isn't something you do too often, there's never really anything worth mentioning back there. But on this case, there is one little thing. Just under this little lip above the rear IO is two little LEDs, which add a little bit of light at the back to make plugging things in a little bit easier. A really, really nice touch game, Max. Well done there. Heading inside requires the removal of four thumb screws to remove the tempered glass panel. I feel like a hinge mechanism would have been a good idea here, considering the massive size of the glass and the weight of it as well. But Game Max have lined the case where the glass meets the chassis with some thin foam so there's no gap between them. Inside the case is where the real business starts to take place. You get four dual ring 120mm RGB halo ring fans included, three for intake and one for exhaust, with up to 10 fans being supported. A bracket is also included, so you can mount three more fans on this side of the case if you remove all of the drive cages. Support for up to 10 three and a quarter inch drives or 13 two and a quarter inch drives, with four of those being in the partly covered PSU basement area. The open basement is kind of a cool idea, especially if you've got some fancy RGB SSDs to show off or an RGB PSU to show off, like this RGB 80 plus gold PSU that Game Max sent over for me to make use of. The link for that will be in the description down below too. But I feel like they should have gone with a maybe a half covered option, which is becoming more common with some manufacturers. And I feel like it would have been a good way to show off just maybe a PSU. There are 12 PCIe slots with two vertical ones available and 10 horizontal ones. The precision supports GPUs that are up to 472 mil in length and CPU coolers that are up to 186 mil in height. The front panel supports 360 or 420 mil radiators if you remove the hard drive enclosure down below with a thickness of less than 61 mil. 
and the top supports 280 or 316mm radiators with a thickness below 58mm and the back supports 120 or 140mm radiators. If you're using three 120mm fans at the front, you can only use one five and a quarter inch bay as well. If you're using three 140mm fans, you can't access any of those five and a quarter inch bays. There are removable dust filters for the PSU and the potential side mounted fans as well. There's more cable grommets than I know what to do with. And a hub is included powered by a four pin Molex, not SATA unfortunately, but this allows you to connect 10 devices, 10 RGB fan devices. Once connected, you can control your fans, mode and speed of your LEDs. As for cable management, it's so easy. As I mentioned, there's tons of grommets, 12 in total, plenty of tie down points, some included Velcro ties, and a massive gap between the side panel and the rear of the motherboard. You don't even have to try. So even if you don't want to try and make it look good back there, you don't have to because it's totally covered up, really easy to get that rear panel back on. And if you're feeling a bit lazy, you can just do it another time. A case this size is ideally suited to EATX boards, dual graphics card setup, maybe some PCIe SSDs or streaming cards as well. Just casually throw in an entire water cooling loop separate pump and reservoirs and maybe dual radiators and then this case might start to make a bit more sense alternatively it makes a nice storage space for maybe some like figurines at the front you like a giant statue or something whatever you want to put inside there the precision overall though it's really well built and it's a really big case there's a lot of competition around this 160 pound price point for cases of this size, like the more affordable Corsair 750D or the similarly priced Thermotake Core X71TG. Precision has a lot to offer that these competitors don't, like a huge glass panel, the RGB fans, the LED light bars, and even the LEDs over the IO. A nice subtle design overall. But what might let it down is the amount of intake airflow at the front. The side panel could be used as an intake, as I mentioned earlier, but I feel that depending on how much or how expansive your water cooling loop is, you may have wanted that extra intake airflow at the front of the case to save some space inside. Realistically though, it's a massive case and you need to be spending a lot of money on water cooling fittings, reservoirs, radiators, all that kind of stuff before you fill this whole thing up. For me personally though, I feel like this would be a great case to do my first custom loop inside of. Because it's big, easy on the eye and and imagine super easy to work in who knows maybe that'll be a video in the future we'll see anyway though guys that is the end of the video as always if you like this kind of stuff feel free to click that like button and if you didn't click that dislike button leave your comments down below let me know what you thought about today's video and you decide my face hasn't offended you and a couple of these flies flying around hasn't offended you either don't hesitate to click that subscribe button so we can see each other again soon thank you and goodbye